Hi, in this video I'm going to be looking at the mean life, or you may have heard it called the average lifetime, and what I mean by that is if we have some, and you've seen this before, maybe if you've seen some of my other videos, but if we have some parent radioactive element and it's decaying over time into some daughter element, and now what's, what's happening here is we can look at individual atoms of this parent. And these all take different amounts of time. So I'm going to have time down here. These take different amounts of time to turn into a daughter atom. So some of them may take longer, some are going to take shorter, and they'll turn into this daughter product eventually. And if I want to find for the mean life, I want to know on average how long does it take for one of these parent atoms to turn into a daughter. So to get the average, what I would do, I would add up the time it took for each of these. So I could say this would be T1, T2, the amount of time for each of these, T3 and T4. I find the total time for the average and you'll also see the symbol for this average the mean life or average lifetime is tau so tau here would equal t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 over how many of these I had right so I had four of them so over four so the mean life equals all the time added up, the total time in other words, divided by how many time slots I had. Now another way I could write this, and this is going to be necessary so that we can set up the integral to solve this thing, but you may remember I said we could call this the amount we start with the parent here, or how much of the parent we have is in. And then I'm going to call each of these tiny little atoms, each of these tiny little pieces of the parent, I'm going to call D in. Each of these is D in, which is a tiny piece of the total in. So now I could rewrite this if I just multiplied this top and bottom by D in over D in. I mean, that's the same as multiplying both sides by 1. D in over D in is just 1. So now I could write, and, and this will, again, be necessary to set up our integral. I could say T1 dn plus, and then all those, plus t4dn, all over, it's 4dn, but I'm going to write it as, it'd be dn plus dn plus dn plus dn. And now we know, of course, there's going to be more than four different dn's here, four different atoms. So if I want to look at all of the atoms here, now I might want to rewrite this to be a little bit easier as a sum. So I could write a sum now of T D N over the sum of D N. And what's more, we can turn this into an integral if we let the limit, is if we let the limit as dn approaches zero, which is a good limit because we're dealing with an atom, which is you know, obviously very, very small. So we could say it approaches zero of the sum of tdn equals the integral of tdn. And then that would also be so we'd have the limit also of dn approaches dn approaches zero of the sum of dn and that equals the integral of dn. So then we would have that our mean life equals the integral of t dn over the integral of dn. And let's think about what would be the limits of this integral. Now think about it. When we very first start, and I, I mentioned this in another video, at time equals zero, 
we start our starting amount we call n of zero. So we'd start out with n of zero. And then we're looking at the time until we have none left, or until we're at zero atoms left. And then same down here, we're looking at the integral from our starting amount until we have none left. Now in order to solve this, because I still have this t here, and it turns out in order to solve this, I really need to recall back, and I'm going to switch colors here. Go to orange. You may recall, I want to substitute for these dn's and get them in terms of t. So I want to put the dn in terms of t. So remember this decay formula, we had n equals n naught e to the negative lambda t. So this implies, if I do a derivative with respect to t, that dn equals n of 0, here n of 0 is just a constant, and then I have to do the derivative of e to the negative lambda t with respect to t. So then I'd get a negative lambda from that exponent, so times negative lambda, then e to the negative lambda t dt. And I can sub this in for my dn's. So then this, if I rewrite this, then tau equals Ah, now we need to be careful here because now we're no longer going to be well let, let me write it first. I just I won't put the limits of integration just yet. Those are going to change. So t times n naught times negative lambda e to the negative lambda t dt over the integral of n naught times negative lambda e to the negative lambda t dt. And now I can't cancel out these e to the negative lambda t's because those still need to be integrated, but this n of zero negative lambda, that's a constant. So I could pull that out of the integral, and then they would just cancel since they're constant. So in other words, this and this will cancel out. And I'd be left with, in that case, the integral of t e to the negative lambda t dt over the integral e to the negative lambda t dt. Now I want us to think about what would our, what would our intervals of integration here be? Now remember over here we went from n of 0 to 0. Now at n of 0, that's our starting amount, or in other words, at t equals 0, our time equals 0. It's our starting amount. So here instead of n of 0, now we, we're working with respect to time, so we'd be 0 here. And then it's the same on the bottom. Now let's think about, we go from n of 0, our starting point, to 0. So when we have no atoms left, all of them have decayed to the daughter. When would that happen? At what time? We don't know what time it would be for sure, like I can't sp pick a specific time, but I do know that every single one of these atoms will go if I let my time go to infinity. It's kind of an interesting trick, and it, it does work in the, in the integral, as you'll see in a minute here, but if I let time go to infinity, then eventually all of these will have to decay if I have an infinite amount of time. Now I will break this integral up into a couple parts. And I just think it's easier to do that. So we'll have the bottom part and the top part. And let's see how I want to mark this. So first I'm just gonna I'm gonna work on this bottom part of the integral. So just looking at this, I have the integral of zero to infinity e to the negative lambda t dt. Well that equals let's see here, I'd have one over negative lambda e to the negative lambda t. And just to I can kind of confirm that, if I did the derivative of this e to the negative lambda t, then I'd have a negative lambda in front, and yeah, I'd be back to e to the negative lambda t, dt. And that's from the interval from 0 to infinity. So if I plug those in, I have 1 over negative lambda e, then I'd have to the negative infinity 
which is just, that ends up being zero, e to the negative infinity is zero, and then minus one over minus lambda e to the, now I put in zero for t, that makes this all go to the zero, so e to the zero, ah, and this minus a minus would be plus, so that'd be one over lambda, e to the zero is one, so just one over lambda is the bottom, that's that bottom integral. Now this top one, you have to remember integration by parts, and I'll write that out for you. Uh, it's fairly straightforward to derive. You can probably find another video if you don't remember how to derive it, but I'm just going to write the final result of integration by parts. So integration by parts, integration by parts is... Let's see, this is the integral of u dv equals u v, and then these are, I'm observing them at a to b, minus the integral from a to b of v du. Now I want to look at this top integral. Now, in this case, it works out if I choose, and I, I'm kind of doing this with knowing how it will work out, and I know it will be easiest if we choose, if we let u equal t and dv equal e to the negative lambda t dt, and then du would just be the derivative of u would be dt and the integral of this v equals well we did that integral just right over here and I, I here I don't have the interval though so I just have one over negative lambda e to the negative lambda c now if I plug that in to my integration by parts formula here, then uv would be, well u is t, and v is times the 1 over negative lambda e to the negative lambda t. This is observed from 0 to infinity. And then minus the integral from a to b, zero to infinity of v du. V is one over minus lambda e to the negative lambda t du is dt. Okay, <laughs> we're almost done. So now I can look at this first part and for this first part I'm going to have if I put in infinity for t and this is going to equal well first okay yeah so and I'm not gonna put infinity in I'm gonna do the limit as t approaches infinity um, and you'll see why here in a second but that would be if I write that out that'd be t over negative lambda, and then I'm going to rewrite this as a positive exponent on the bottom in the denominator, e to the lambda t. And then now I'm going to put in the zero, so that'd be minus a t over minus lambda, would be plus e to the, and oh, oh, I'm sorry, I was putting in zero for this t e to the 0, which would be 1, but we can see since it's time 0, this whole thing's going to go to 0. And then minus this one. Oh, and I can pull this 1 over negative lambda out. It's a, a constant, so really I can make that a plus 1 over lambda integral from 0 to infinity 
e to the negative lambda t dt. All right. Now then, <laughs> I promise we're almost done. Now this first one, I'm just going to switch colors because I think it's maybe starting to get a little confusing. So I'll go back to, I'll go to this light blue. Now, if you use L'Hopital's rule, L'Hopital's rule states that if I do the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, if I can talk, with the same limit, then, then the limit will be the same. So in other words, if I do the the derivative of the top of that with respect to t would just be 1 over, and it's the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over, if I do the derivative of the bottom with respect to t, I get negative lambda squared e to the lambda t. Well, now if I put in this limit, now if I put in infinity, then I have 1 over infinity, which would just go to 0. This whole thing would go to 0, and that's by L'Hopital's rule. <clears throat> I know you, you may not be familiar with it, but you should be able to find another video on it somewhere. But this whole thing would go to 0, and that's L'Hopital's rule. I think it's spelled like that. It's L'Hopital's rule. And then the second part, now we did up here... That's the same as this integral. So really this would be plus, and the result of that was one over lambda. So we have a one over lambda out front, so it'd be one over lambda out front times one over lambda, or one over lambda squared. Now I know this is a mess. <laughs> I know this is a mess, but now if we put it all together, then remember we had tau, equals, it was this integral, which we just found is 1 over lambda squared, 1 over lambda squared, divided by this integral, which is 1 over lambda, 1 over lambda, then this equals so 1 over lambda squared, then we can flip in times here, so times lambda over 1. This just equals 1 over lambda. So the average, and this is this is kind of crazy, but this is indeed the result. And this lambda is the decay constant. So the average lifetime, that's all that's to say, the average lifetime up here of these atoms to decay is 1 over the decay constant. That's the average amount of time it takes. And Again, this is the math to show that, that this result is indeed true. I know that seems kind of crazy, uh, but if you have any questions about anything, please leave a comment. And I hope you learned something. I hope that made sense. Thanks for watching.